Detective Kunkel, did you have an opportunity throughout your investigation to listen to any jail calls or jail visits between these defendants and any other people outside the jail? Yes, I did. Okay. If you want to explain to the members of the jury how that jail phone system works. Okay. So um, if you make a jail phone call, every um, person in the jail has a number. So you can look it up by the number. We can listen to just thurs. We can listen to anybody's phone call that's in jail. So you actually can listen from start to finish. Also, the visitation booths at the jail, they are also recorded as well. And we listen to them the same way. There's a system at the office we can get on and we can listen to it. Okay. Did you have an opportunity to review uh, a jail visit between Jessica Gross and a Stacy Hall? Yes, I did. Okay. Did you confirm after that that the person on the other end of that jail visit was Stacy Hall? Yes, I did. Okay. How did you do that? I actually uh, spoke with her. Stacy Hall? Yes. Okay. Be handy what's going to be marked as Stacy's exhibit 78. And ask you to recognize the items that would be on that disc. Uh, yes, I do. This would be uh, calls through our jail system, so it could be um, either from the visitation booth or from a phone call made. Okay. And have you had an opportunity to review those? Yes, I have. Inmate visits? Yes, I have. Okay. For ease, I also have loaded those to a jump drive. can read it into the record. Okay. CSN 2859372, dated 6-14-2019 at 1950-31. ID 200-29-737, inmate Jessica D. Gross, call station 3114. Thank you. Call number 2859372. In the ID two zero zero two nine seven three seven date two thousand nineteen six fourteen time one nine five zero three one dialed number from station three one one one. This call will be recorded and subject to monitoring at any time. You may begin speaking now. Hello? I don't understand. They have everything screwed up, Stacy. I can't discuss anything. But it's so wrong. So wrong. You know I would never ever hurt my children. You wouldn't. He 
and the right thing. And mistakes get made. I've been so distraught. I'm just falling apart. What are you going to do? Take a call. She could have messaged me. I didn't have no way. I haven't had no phone. I haven't had nothing. I have nobody. You knew I would have been there. You knew I would have. I don't know anybody's phone number. Aunt Linda won't accept my phone calls. All I have is Daniel, and he is stuck in here, too. I don't know what to do. You should have been honest with me from the start. I had to help. I can't help when I don't know. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I don't know what to do. I don't think there's anything that you can do. First off, I did not do this. We did not do this. But everything points that you did. I did. Everything looks different than it seems. If you're not there, you don't know. They're making me out to be a monster, and I am not. <laughs> I know you're not. Neither is Daniel. But I didn't want to see Stacy, it was not because of that. That had nothing to do with it. Nothing. I swear to you, nothing. Nothing. One day I will explain it to you, I swear, but they had nothing, nothing to do with it. I promise you with all that's in me, nor my children, nothing. Do you guys have anything in my book there? Of what? Anything. That was the one for him, for us. No. Did you buy anything from anybody? No. Like what? I didn't know you had anything stolen from you. Oh, like stuff. If I did, I would give it to you. Because I know how much that would mean to you. Because I know now everything that was at my house, everything that I have left of my children, my mother, Daniel's mother is gone. They destroyed my house. I'm sure everything in it that is worth anything is gone. I'm sure, yeah, I'm sure they did it. I have nothing left. Nothing. I'm going to make sure that Dylan gets the funeral. They were supposed to have a visit or a lighted vigil or something last night that. I don't know. That doesn't really help, does it? No, it don't. Daniel's sister or somebody, I don't know who, was supposed to start a GoFundMe account. But I can't read anymore. <laughs> Hutchinson's going to review something for briefly before we continue. If there's nothing uh, we need to address, then you can go ahead and proceed. I saw one thing. 
that I can only imagine. I don't even want to see it. I don't even know that I love you. I never turned my back on you. I love you, too. And all you had to do was reach out. I'm going to help anyway with children's services. You can just take my name. I'm whatever I said. I'm sorry, but I, I didn't have no means of communication. No nothing. CPS made Daniel not have a job, so we didn't have money. Stuck up there on the hill by myself, just me and him. Things have been going on for a long time. I know it. I know it. It's not what it all seems. I swear. <laughs> Your baby's dead. I know. And I suspect my mother's a bad boy. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. He's a good boy. And he's so smart. I don't 
know where he gets it. I really don't. And I know you're a good person. I know you are. Not many people do. But I know. How are you going to find out if you are? I don't know. I can't even write Daniel a letter or anything. They did let me see him because he was cooperative with them. So he told him where Daniel was. He did. Because they threatened him with murder. And you got it anyway. And got it anyway. I would never, Daniel would never, ever hurt our children. I would never hurt our children. When you're high, you don't know what you do. That had nothing to do with it. I swear to you. I swear. If it had anything, any, if there was even an inkling that it had anything to do with it, I swear I would tell you, I promise you, that had absolutely nothing to do with it, nothing. <laughs> Look in my eyes, in my soul, I'm telling you, nothing to do with it. I promise you, I'm getting death threats in here already. They holler through the door and call me names and tell me just to hang myself because if not, they're going to take care of it for me. They wouldn't even give me a blanket. They haven't given me soap. They won't let me take a shower. I finally took a shower, I don't even know, yesterday or the day before, which is water. And I stood there until I dripped dry and put back all my dirty, filthy, nasty, stinky clothes. And then finally today, some other girl lit me soap and shampoo under the door so that I could take a shower because I felt nasty. I still feel nasty, but at least I did get a little bit of soap. They wouldn't even give me a spoon to eat with for like four days. You don't have to be suicidal in this place because this place will kill you, literally. But I promise you, don't believe what they're saying. How do you get there? I can't discuss anything. <laughs> everything that me and you have said, they're listening to everything. And they're going to take everything they can from me and run and try to bury me alive. I don't know how we're going to do it, but we're going to fight it. We've got to because we did not do this. I promise you, accidents happen. And people make mistakes. Yes, we've done some things wrong, but nothing like this. Nothing. I promise you. I never expected to get a visit. 
Of course I would. I was hoping that you could come and see me. I didn't know that you would. But I was hoping you would, and I didn't know your phone number. I only had two phone calls, and I tried calling Aunt Linda. I don't know what was saying. And she rejected my calls. I don't know exactly why, but it is what it is, I reckon. I don't have the support that I should. And you never have. No, I have. I know that. But I was only there. I know. I was But I don't know where you live. I don't know. I don't know anybody's phone number. Don't have internet and in, well, haven't had it for quite a while. So I've just kind of, it's just been me and Daniel. We are all we have. No matter what, in him or forever, it's till death do you part. Do the good and the bad. And I know you know that because I know you didn't have the perfect marriage. Nobody does. Everybody has their problems. And you work through them. And you love each other forever, no matter what. <laughs> And I'm so sorry for you for that. And I don't know that I'm as tough as... Detective Conkle, when you were uh, out at the trailer in that consent search, did you come across a calendar out there? Yes, I did. Okay. In your in interviews with Defendant Daniel Gross, did he ever give you a time frame or a date that baby Dylan might have died? Yes, he did. What did he tell you? He told me that it was within a couple of days of Children's Services being there, which would have been March 28th, so he figured somewhere from the 28th to the 30th. Okay. And the calendar, let me hand you what's going to be March 6th, Exhibit 79 for identification. Look at State's Exhibit 79. Is that the calendar you photographed when you were out there? Yes, it is. What day, what month is uh, that picture? Uh, it's in the picture on the calendar. April. Sorry. Okay. Uh, what year? 2019. Okay. And there's some writing that you saw on a date on that calendar. Is that right? Yes, there is. Okay. What did that say? On the 24th, it says, worst day ever. Through your investigation, were you ever able to relate April 24th to any event in this case? Yes, I was. Tell the jury what that was. When Daniel was removed. Was there any other notation on that calendar between March 28th and April 24th that would indicate when baby Dylan was murdered? No, there was not. You've heard some conversations in here this week about questionable cell phone service out in that area. Yes, I have. Can you explain to the jury, is there any service out there? Yeah, it is spotty. I know uh, I used my phone out there. Not every place. You had to uh, move around. Um, after being there so long, you could know where to go to get service. And depending on, I have AT&T, different phones could be different. But if you would go down to the end of their driveway, there's a neighbor right there. Very friendly man. Okay. 
one neighbor, several neighbors? There's a lot of neighbors, but I just happened to talk to him and when I was out there. Okay. Detective Kunkel, in the event that somebody doesn't have a home phone, are you aware through your employment with the Sheriff's Department ways that people can reach 911? Yeah, so if you, even if you don't have phone service, if you have a phone in your house and it's plugged in, you can call 911 and we will answer. It goes straight through. It doesn't have to be hooked up through a phone service. You don't have to have a phone bill. Just plug it into the wall and it will let you call 911. Yes, that is correct. Okay. To your knowledge, Detective Conkle, were there ever any calls made for emergency assistance for baby Dylan to that house? There was not. From your investigation, Detective Conkel, was there ever any reason for you to believe that anybody else had been around this baby? No. Do you see Jessica Groves and Daniel Groves here in the courtroom today? Yes, I do. Good afternoon, Detective Conkle. Good afternoon. Um, you went through a lot of information, so we're going to step back a little bit here. You have some words to describe Jessica Groves. Um, you said cold. Yes. Annoyed. Yes. Standoffish. Yes. And closed off. Yes. From your experience as a detective, as a police officer for 27 years? That is correct. Almost. March. Okay. As, as from your experience, does that indicate some kind of guilt? You, it can. Uh, a lot of times, yes. You mentioned that uh, Daniel gave you a date of death. What were those dates again? Um, he said that it was shortly after, his, his words to me was shortly after Children's Services was there, which was on March the 28th. He thought maybe within a couple of days, which would be March. some, March shortly, 30th. Shortly after Children's Services was there, correct? That is correct. Okay. And then you were shown by the prosecution a calendar that had written on April 24th, worst day ever. Yes, I was. Okay. And that day was the day that their last child was taken out of the house, correct? That's the information that was uh, given to me. That is correct. Okay. That day, Daniel Jr. was taken by who? Do you know? I would assume Children's Services. Okay. No further questions, Your Honor. Thank you. Good afternoon, Detective Conkle. Good afternoon. I'll tear these out so I don't flip and make that noise on the microphone. You had an opportunity through your investigation to have encounters with both Daniel Groves and Jessica Groves, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And as part of that investigation would you accurately state that or am I accurately stating that my client originally was not very cooperative with the investigation up front he didn't and tell you the truth where the body was located correct that is correct he lied a lot okay um, you do you recall the exact date and the exact time when you first encountered him after he was arrested? Uh, the exact time I would not have in front of me. Um, 
The date would have been the 10th. The e he was arrested the evening of the 10th, correct? That is correct. And you would have encountered him that same evening, correct? That is correct. Okay. And at that point in time, I believe that both you and him indicated that he had been under the influence of drugs. That is correct. Okay. Um, that he appeared sick, and he also admitted that to you, that he was dope sick. Yes, that is correct. correct. Okay. And obviously, I'm sure he had had multiple encounters with law enforcement by that period of time and, could, and would have explained to him that he was facing some very potentially um, serious charges in relation to the child, not, his whereabouts not being known, correct? I was not out there during when he was arrested or when she was arrested, uh, so I can't tell you what, con what conversation took place, but normally when you're the detective doing the interview or you're the lead on something, no one else would even question them or talk to them about the situation, but again, I was not there. Okay. When you encountered Mr. Groves, um, did you tell him what possible charges he may be facing? Yeah, throughout the interview, based on only the information he gave me, which was not correct information, I, I did bring up possible what it could be, but ultimately I don't make that decision. The prosecutor's office does. I understand that. Okay. Um, but th would th the nature of those charges um, cause someone to be um, intimidated? That's something you'd have to ask him. Okay. Um, when you have had... Um, your multiple years of experience and your multiple times of investigating and talking to different individuals, um, is it atypical that someone's not cooperative with you up front? Um, actually, I have a lot of them that are cooperative up front and very, very helpful, but I do have those who lie and that are not cooperative. And is that especially true when um, there are very serious charges that people are facing or believe they may be facing? I've had people come in instantly that's had serious charges worse than this and admit to it and tell the truth. But it's both ways. It can be both ways. Okay. And, but, origin, but as the investigation went on, uh, Daniel Groves indicated to you that he wanted to be truthful with you, correct? When I would get on to him or prove to him that I knew he was lying, he would tell me a little bit more, some being false, some who knows. Okay. The same words that you use to describe Jessica Groves, cold, annoying, um, belligerent, and I didn't write down all of those various words, would you say those same things about Daniel Groves? Uh, no, I would not. Okay. Did he appear as if he was more trying to be forthcoming with you or not belligerent to you, not rude to you? Uh, he appeared like when I would catch him in the lies, he was more trying to cover those more okay. than anything, but not cold and standoffish. Okay. Um, and did he seem as if he was genuinely concerned about the situation that he was facing? He seemed more concerned about the dogs, actually. He did seem concerned about the dogs. Yeah. He also seemed concerned about his wife, too, as well. The wife and the dogs more than anything. Yes, that is correct. Okay. Um, but he did show some genuine concern to you. Whether it be about the dogs, his wife, or whatever, he wasn't being cold, he wasn't being distant, he wasn't being annoying, and he wasn't being belligerent, correct? I would say that's correct, yes. Okay. He did consent and went out with you actually to his residence? Yes. Did Mrs. Groves do that? No, but I did not ask her to. I'm not saying whether you no. did or you didn't, but he did. Yes, he did. Okay. He accompanied to you the residence. He executed a search warrant with you, correct? Was not a search warrant, but or, it was a well, consent, consent to search. consent to search. Yes. Okay. That is correct. And at one point in time, you described him as being emotional. 
um, that he even got, when he was out at one of the scenes, I believe it was the, one of the very first scenes that he took you to or he was purporting was the scene or the location of where the body would be found. He got emotional. The, the first false location. Correct. Yes, he appeared to get emotional. Okay. Because nothing was there. I understand that, yeah. but he did appear to be emotional. He wasn't yeah. cold. He wasn't distant. No. He was emotional. Yeah, very okay. talkative. Okay. Um, he also described to you that him and Jessica came up with the children's services taking the baby story <laughs> together. Yes, he did. Okay. Um, when she came into the room... Um, he even offered to give her his drinks when you told them that they could share their share the drinks. He said she can have them all. Correct? That is correct. Yes. Okay. You also heard, and we also saw in that interview um, how she described her own self, how belligerent she was to the cops when she felt the cops were being belligerent to her. Correct. Yes. You did not hear that same description coming from Daniel Groves, did you? The, uh, Daniel saying the cops were belligerent? That he was belligerent to the cops or how he behaved towards the officers on the scene. I was not advised of that. That is correct. But you did not see any of that being described to you? No, I did not. When you were sitting in the other room and then when we watched it here today, correct? That is correct, yes. Okay. You also heard how... Uh, Jessica Groves and her, when they were sitting in that room together, advised Daniel how she described to the police officers how you were not, how he was not violent, how he had didn't have a violent bone in his body. You heard her talk about that, correct? Yes, I did hear that. Okay. You also heard her describe, or um, you also told Daniel. Um, that you believed he was emotional about the whole situation and that, how he loved that baby. You told him that? Yes, I did tell him that. Okay. Um, and at the end of all of this, he finally tells you the true location of the baby. Is that correct? At the very end, that is correct. Yeah. You were in the vicinity of where that well was, correct? When you went out there in that open field, yeah, I would went guess, through all those. I would guess about a length of a football field. That's totally a guess, yes. Okay. Um, so you were, and he also told you that there were other wells on that property too to make sure that you didn't have any other accidents or somebody step in one accidentally. He told you that there were other well, at, at, at least another well. Yes, he by. did. That is okay. correct, yes. Okay. So he showed some concern for your safety. Well, he didn't say why he was telling us that, right. but he did say there was another well. Okay. In that last um, audio that we heard played with Jessica and Stacy Hall, we once again heard Jessica describe... Daniel was being cooperative with the police, correct? If you call cooperative also lying, yes. Well, but she called him cooperative. Oh, yes, she called him cooperative, yes. Okay. I'm not denying he yeah. lied, but he did end up telling you the truth. About the location. Correct? Yes. Okay. Um, he, and you were able to recover the body? Yes, we were. And he's the only one that did so of those two, That correct? is correct, yes. Um, he even asked to speak to you. He asked to speak to you. When he was in jail, that is correct, yes. Okay. He reached out to you. That it is correct. It wasn't cor the other way around when this all finally came out, correct? That is correct, yes. He initiated the conversation with you even after he had an attorney assigned to him, correct? That is correct, yes. And that's not something he needed to do? That is not something he needed to do. Once he got counsel, and he's no longer, you know, he he's no longer under any obligation to talk to you without his counsel being present. That is correct. He okay. he wanted to see Jessica. 
Right, but he also wanted to see you. Right, so I can arrange that. That is correct. But he also spoke to you. Yes, he did. That was the only thing that he asked to get accomplished. He asked to speak to you. He did ask to speak to me, yes. Okay, and he came clean. He came clean about the location. Of the baby. Yes, after we got out there and he showed us another false location. That is correct. Sure. But at the end of the day, he was the only one that did so of those two, correct? That is correct. Thank you. I have no further questions right now, Your Honor. Thank you, Ms. Scott. Any redirect? Just a couple. <coughs> Detective Conkle, <coughs> after you took, after you overheard their conversation and you removed Jessica from the room, he still denied. Absolutely. But he said what he said and what Absolutely. you heard him say to her about taking you to the wrong location. Yes, I just had to keep calling him a liar and stay on him. That is correct. Would it be accurate to say you never even asked Jessica about that conversation after you took her out of there? That is accurate. Okay. And so then he takes you back out into this field, away from where the baby actually is recovered. That is correct. So after the 10th, the 11th, and the 12th, at some point you do recover that body. That is correct. Do you have an opportunity to interview this defendant again on the 14th? Yes, I did. Okay. And would it be accurate to say at that time he denies his involvement in the child's death but admits that he dumped his body? That is correct. Okay. And then did you have an opportunity to listen to his inmate visitation with a female? Yes, I did. And in that conversation, he denies all involvement and denies dumping the body. Isn't that right? That is correct. I have nothing further. Any recross, Mr. Shred? No, Your Honor. Ms. Scott? Your Honor, if I can have just a moment. were asked about based on my questions to you that Daniel is the only person that you ended up having a follow-up conversation with is that correct what she of asked those two individuals what she asked me is after they were in there talking to each other did I talk to Jessica after that or was it just Daniel it was just Daniel and it was just Daniel because he was the one that was more approachable in the situation, correct? Yes, that is correct. Thank you. Any further questions, Ms. Scott? No further questions, thank you. Is witness excused? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you, you can step down. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, we're gonna take a recess at this time. I'm gonna ask that counsel approach the bench after the jury leaves the room. We're gonna take care of another issue while they're on recess. Remember my earlier admonition to you, do not discuss this case amongst yourselves or with anyone else. Do not permit anyone to discuss it with you or in your presence. It is your duty not to form or express an opinion on this case until it is finally submitted to you. I would direct the bailiffs to collect the listening aids that were given to you earlier. Uh, if you will maintain those in case we need them in the future. This time we're all take a late afternoon recess and we'll come back and include, conclude our testimony once you're finished. Please don't close your hands and listen right on top.
back on the record on case number 19 CR 586 A and B, case styled State of Ohio versus Daniel Groves and State of Ohio versus Jessica Groves. Uh, we've taken a recess in the afternoon. Uh, the state, I believe, has their next witness uh, here in the building. Uh, it's my understanding that this witness is a minor. And ma'am, your name for the record is Phyllis Shirey. Is that correct? And you are the guardian for this uh, witness? Yes. And that witness is Daniel Groves, Jr.? Yes. All right. Now, as his guardian, we do have media present here in the courtroom. And I will allow you to make this decision on his behalf. He's 17? He's 15. 15? Uh, do you object to the use of his image uh, being filmed or photographed during his testimony? Yes. I am going to direct the news media not to photograph or videotape his image while he's testifying. Now, we had this discussion earlier. I think someone asked about it, asked one of the court staff about it. Um, in Ohio, we don't have the protections for names of minors like some states have. Uh, I will, I've been involved in a lot of cases over the last 25 years have unfortunately had to uh, call minors to testify on many different occasions. Um, it'll be up to each different uh, news media outlet or entity that's recording or broadcasting these proceedings if they allow the use of his name. It's up to your policies and procedures. I can tell you that my experience in a uh, small town, 80,000 people in this county, um, probably a whole lot fewer people in the part of the county where he's living. Um, it could be tough sometimes on a kid to have that, uh, but ultimately it's up to the media to decide uh, their position on that and uh, what ultimately he'll uh, go through as a result of whatever decision you make. would ask you to consider that, but ultimately that'll be your decision. This time, court is recessed. Thank you, Your Honor.